They are the hunters. Tornado! Tornado on the ground! Get up to it! Get up to it! This is their prey. Tornado! We got a tornado! They're dancing! They're dancing! Two outcasts in the world of storm chasing. Time for some bottle daddy surprise! Who break every rule in the book. Nobody's gonna put restrictions or limitations on me as far as what I can and can't do around the storm. The decisions you make are life and death. You make the wrong decision, it's over. Oh, shit, the window busted. One tracks tornadoes with instinct and adrenaline. I've never seen a tornado that I couldn't read and predict where it was gonna go. The other uses the tools of the trade. A correct forecast can make you or it can break you. Both risk their lives to help others. I'm out there because I want to try to get the word out to save people's lives. There's no better feeling in the world than knowing that people took shelter because they heard you. They don't have money or high-tech equipment. We're in the middle of a tornado! Son of a bitch! Their methods get them branded as outlaws by other chasers. I'm in a tornado! I'm in a tornado! Renegade team of storm junkies that give them a horrible, bad name. When frankly, I don't give a damn. We're right over it. They're going after the biggest, baddest, most unpredictable weather known to man. Oh, it just did another house. The action is where the tornadoes are. It's not two miles back. You want to taste it, you want to feel it, you want to breathe it. You got to beat it. Outlaw chasers, we're the best! This is the life of a storm chaser. Look at it, RFD tilting it. RFD's gonna tilt it. Oh, baby! An eccentric mix of scientists and thrill seekers who descend on Tornado Alley every year to study lethal twisters. Most of them sit back and safely study tornadoes from afar with high-powered radar and computers. But not Lanny Dean and Randy Hicks. Come get me, motherfucker! Chasing is like a drug. There's no better high than when you see a tornado on the ground and it's just ripping across the countryside and you're able to stay with it. Tornado on the ground, baby! Randy, we did it! Once you get that addiction, you can't get enough of it. We've been in tornadoes. There ain't nothing like it. This renegade duo risks their lives to get up close and personal with the tornadoes they hunt. A lot of chasers want to go out and film a tornado from five miles away, and if they like that Norman Rockwell looking shit, well, that's fine with me, but that ain't doing it for me. Uh, this is boring the shit out of me. The action is where the tornado's at. It's not two miles back. You want to taste it, you want to feel it, you want to breathe it, you got to beat it. For Lenny, it's his job and his passion. We've got a rear flank downdraft of measure it, a 70 mile an hour rear flank downdraft, a very large wedge. Do you copy? Lenny drove all the way from Missouri down here to catch this particular tornado this afternoon. What we call a rear flank downdraft was visible here. I'm not out there to try to impress anybody. And I'm out there because I want to try to get the word out to save people's lives. There's no better feeling in the world than knowing that people took shelter because they heard you. For Randy, it's a mission. Film the inside of a tornado before he dies. Until I get the inside of that tornado filmed, I'm gonna get it done or die trying it. There ain't no backing down. His secret weapon, a homemade video probe called the Caminator. This is what I call the Caminator DVP, which stands for dual video probe, meaning that it has two digital video camcorders inside. Trying to deploy the probe has increased our risk factor tenfold. Now we have to take risks that normally you wouldn't take. I mean, we're talking about could kill us. Damn, we gotta go. The life-threatening risks they take and a few close calls earn Randy and Lanny bad reputations with the storm-chasing community. I'm in the tornado. And I got spanked by the chasing community. Letters, emails, phone calls. They had a fit. This guy's a, this guy's a idiot. Yet he's gonna get himself killed. You run into these guys, this guy calls you an outlaw, that guy calls you an outlaw. Well, if I'm outlaw, I am the outlaw. And that's when I decided I was the outlaw chaser. 
Randy and Lanny's chases often start on back roads like this one, deep in the heart of Kansas. I ran a forecast and I knew that something was going to happen in Kansas, as far as I could narrow it down. Randy and I talked the night before the Mulvane tornado, and both agreed that South Central Kansas was the place to be. And on the next thing I know, we're, we're busting down the road, headed towards Wichita, trying to get to the storm. I'm driving down the road, and I've got some loud music playing, some good hard rock and music, and, and I'm, a, I'm in my zone. Game of the day. I hope people don't die today. Hours later, the outlaws arrive just outside of the town of Mulvane, Kansas. It's 5.50. It's just about 6 o'clock. We love 6 o'clock because it, it really, truly is like the witching hour. Crazy stuff happens. I don't know why, but every chaser out there knows that 6 o'clock is magic. As if on cue, the storm's intensity suddenly multiplies. It, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and stronger. And you could see it. It's just a matter of time. It was wound up like an eight-day clock. Let's see what happened to this bad boy. It's rotating like a big dog. I can tell. I can tell this sucker is just about ready to drop. And then, bam! Tornado's on the ground! Tornado! Tornado on the ground! We have power flashes up there! So I drive towards the tornado, because that's what I do. That's the way I roll. It's throwing debris around. I see the debris, and I mean, it's really chunking it. There's still debris flying in there. I need to be very careful. Game on. Oh, man. Oh, man. We are right behind this tornado. And I mean, just a couple of hundred yards behind this tornado. I'm kind of worried at this point. I realize, hey, we, we've got towns come up. Or this maybe get into Mulvane. Or now I'm starting to sweat it because of these communities. I've got to stay with the storm. Lanny races to beat the tornado into the heart of the town of Mulvane. But Randy is still on the outskirts of town, hunting for a good spot to deploy his video pro. I had never seen a tornado that had so much electrical activity in and around it, like, you know, lightning strikes, thunder booming. Let's see, I'm the only chaser with the balls enough to stand here and take it. I got about four miles east of town, and I'm thinking, you know, hey, I'm in a good position here. It's time to turn the probe on. Then the whole storm shifted and started heading in towards Mulvane. You know, Lanny takes chances like I do. And at that time, I didn't have a cell phone, no way to really have contact with Lanny. Lanny, you ought to be closing in by now. Where in the hell you at? Coming up, Lanny goes head to head with the gruesome tornado and witnesses nature's fury up close. No. Mulvane, Kansas. A devastating twister is menacing the small community, barreling toward the heart of town. Lenny races to beat the tornado to populated areas. I'm driving in town, and it's raining to beat cats and dogs. I mean, it is really coming down. I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, oh my god, it's a small community. Could be flat. I remember picking up the cell phone and making a call to one of the local media outlets in that area, trying to get the word out. In the city of Mulvane, uh, sirens are going off, as you all can hear. Large hail falling. Very large hail falling. There it is, right there. The tornado wasn't but a couple hundred yards from me right then and there. He's moving in my direction. I'm going to try to stay with this, guys, as long as I possibly can, so that we can give you guys some kind of an adequate warning. I remember thinking, I, I just a little closer. Right now, we're going to come up on it here. And then it swings. Good God. Oh. As I'm barreling south on Highway 15, I see this tornado plow into a house. It plows it. And I'm seeing debris going up into the air. Oh, no, there went a house. We just saw a house go. A tornado, when it gets in that state, is almost like a, an ice skater. You know, when, they, when they're skating and they pull their arms in, they go faster and faster. That's exactly the mechanics you had right then and there. 
The tornado is getting smaller and smaller, but it's spinning faster and faster and faster. Oh, it just hit another house. It just hit another house. No. No. God, I hope those people are okay. I hope those people are okay. Randy is on the opposite side of the tornado when the house is obliterated. Debris. Son of a bitch, all kinds of debris. Your heart kind of falls out of your stomach because you know that debris you're seeing is someone's home, that's someone's life, that's everything they own, and it's gone, you know. Randy takes another shot at positioning his homemade video probe directly in front of the oncoming twister. Sweet mother of Jesus. Look at the debris. I've got to go down the road if I'm going to deploy. Randy tears down country roads, but no matter what he tries, he can't get ahead of the storm. Every time I thought I knew what this tornado was going to do, it did just the opposite of what I thought it was going to do. Before Randy can get into position, the violent twister begins to dissipate. One of the last stages of a tornado life cycle is the rope out stage. And it's where the tornado itself starts to shrink, kind of snakes and slithers. She's roping. Roping out. Damn it. I knew at that point that, you know, that there was no chance of, of getting a deployment on this one. So then you just go ahead and take in the moment, you know, and, and watch the storm for, for what you can. Oh, man. Tornado leaves patches of destruction in its wake, but most of the town of Mulvane is spared. There are injuries, but no fatalities. Hell yes, I'm happy. We went out and we did what we were supposed to do. We got some great video. It's a very unique thing for Chaser to be able to see the entire life cycle of the tornado. It doesn't get any better than this. But Randy isn't so happy. It was a big disappointment that I didn't it didn't meet my goal, but uh, I'll be back and back and back till I get the shot we're after. But there's no guarantee the outlaws will ever have another chance to get that close to a twister again. You're trying to outwit Mother Nature, and Mother Nature is a fickle bitch. I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of it's a luck. To improve the odds, they'll break three cardinal rules of tornado chasing. Rule number one. Yeah, don't drive on dirt roads. Anytime you take a dirt road, you're taking a, you're chance. Taking a chance. You might get stuck. Still hoping to find some pavement here soon. You might get in the, the path of the tornado and not be able to maneuver. I'm in a tornado. Ain't nothing I can do. They can sneak up and bite you in the ass. Like it's a risk that we're OK taking. If the storms followed highways, I guess I'd stick to the highways. But, you know, the storm kind of goes where it goes. I'll take any road that'll get me there. Paved dirt, back lane. Rule number two, don't chase at night. We're in the middle of a tornado! Son of a bitch! You put your hands over your eyes, <laughs> try driving down the road, that's what it's like. You can't see Now we're gonna be The tornado could absolutely be right in front of you you wouldn't have a clue. Lightning becomes your friend. You try to look at the lightning to see possible tornadoes or damage or debris up ahead of you. Uh, it is it We've caught a lot of grief for it. We've been belittled, mocked, hated, pushed around. I don't give a when it is, day or night. I gotta be there if I can get there. Rule number three, never ever punch a core. We're right over it. Oh, oh yeah, who's your daddy? The core of the storm is ahead of the tornado. Heavy rain, large hail, strong winds. Just on the other side of that core, 90% of the time you have an area rain free, very close to the tornado. You're trying to drive through from one side of that core to the other. It's a necessity because there's no way to see that tornado unless you do punch that core. Is it dangerous? Hell yeah. Can it kill you? Hell yeah. We're gonna be punching a core. It's not very smart, but that's how we roll, boys. 
Nobody's going to put restrictions or limitations on me as far as what I can and can't do around a storm. To even the odds with Mother Nature, Randy and Lanny recruit other chasers who share their passion for twisters. Lisa. Lisa's our rock. And Mike. Mikey is the wild card. He's the court jester. Now it's a whole different ballgame. Nothing beats a dream and a team. Our goal is to film the inside of that tornado. Whatever it takes, we're going to do it. Coming up, the outlaws have a chance to make history. I'm in the tornado. I'm in the tornado. If they can manage to survive the night. Springs, Kansas, the site of the outlaw chaser's craziest hunt. Tornado dead, dead ahead of us. Randy and Lanny look back on this record-setting day as the best chase of their career. Conway Springs is still number one. I mean, it's right up there with the most extreme I've ever seen. A massive supercell, the most violent type of thunderstorm known for spawning tornadoes, spreads across the Kansas-Oklahoma border. The supercell that generated the tornadoes was probably one of the biggest storms that I'd ever seen. As they gear up and race to south-central Kansas, the colossal storm only gets stronger. It takes six hours for the outlaws to finally reach their target area and split up. Lanny expected a massive tornado outbreak today, but even he's amazed by what awaits him. We actually have a very large circulation on the ground right now, and we had a, a couple of carousel tornadoes encompassing this tornado. Lanny's not chasing just one tornado. He's chasing a whole gang of them. He kept dropping. Tornado. Tornado number seven. After tornado. Tornado number 11. After tornado. Tornado number 12. It was almost a tornado fest. And of course, each tornado through its life cycle seemed to be a little bigger, a little badder, a little stronger. Lanny battles the horde of twisters for hours. And the storm continues to build until it unleashes the biggest, baddest tornado of the day. Oh my gosh. just got big and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I was looking right down the throat of a mile wide tornado. Monster tornado, monster tornado on the Oklahoma, Kansas border. Wind speeds climb above 100 miles per hour as it cuts a swath miles long. I had to kind of pause and, and think about what was happening. What can I do? You make an error, and it can kill you. And all the while, I've got these smaller tornadoes on the outside of this big tornado that you're not really safe anywhere you go. Huge monster tornado. First thing I do is pick up the phone. Well, I call my friend who's an on-camera meteorologist to give him the information vital to pass on to the public about what direction it was heading. Uh, and tornado is intensifying. Tornado is intensifying. Very large tornado on the ground. I'm three telephone poles away from a mile wide tornado. I'm scared, but but I'm cool with it. Less than a couple hundred feet from a mile wide tornado. We have a mile wide tornado. I'm just trying to stay with this storm. It was pretty scary. I was thinking, hey, what's Randy doing? Is he OK? <laughs> Randy and fellow chaser Mike are only a few miles away when they catch sight of the beast. Tornado! <laughs> yeah! yeah! Randy instantly knows this might be his best chance to successfully test his video probe, the Caminator. It's just a few hundred yards off to the left in the field. Tornado's right there. And the above us. Oh, it's right on us. I'm ready to put the probe down and get the hell out of there. You know, I, I, the fear's taking over then. OK, if we're going to do it, we got to do it now. Oh, gosh. Man, this is awesome, Randy. I actually feel it. Make sure we're not zoomed in too much. Truck, Mike, get the truck. Come on. Get the truck, Mike, what? get the truck. We got time. Miss it or not, we just ain't got time, man. 
There was debris flying above us, around us. That was, that was close. It was real close. Randy and Mike quickly retreat to what they think is a safe distance. Then they watch as the tornado closes on the probe. Uh-oh. Here it goes, dude. This works going to tear shit up. Giant tunnel. And it's going right on the caminator. Hold on, hold on. Lord, don't flip us now. Tornado is five telephone poles in front of us. We're getting 140 mile an hour wrap around. We're in the bear's cage in the hook. Oh my God, man, this is crazy. Sweet mother of Jesus, there's another tornado, we're dead. I mean, everywhere you're looking, there's debris flying around there. And then on to top it all off, here's the sun setting in behind it. It's the most beautiful thing I ever saw. Randy and Mike sit tight and wait for the tornado to move off. Then they swoop in to retrieve the probe. And uh, as I'm closing in on the probe, I'm seeing a vehicle coming from the other direction. Here comes this truck flying up, honking its horn. And I'm thinking, oh my god, these are there's some crazy sons of bitches right there. And I pull a little closer, and it's Randy. We just got Randy. I helped him load up the probe, threw it in the back of the truck. The outlaws escape in opposite directions. The massive tornado has already put too much distance between itself and the chasers. So Lenny pursues another smaller tornado that has spun off from the immense storm. Tornado is dead ahead of us. Tornado dead, dead ahead of us. Lenny can sense something unsettling about this tornado. It seems volatile, unstable. Very erratic, very, very hard to read at that point. Without warning, the zigzagging twister jerks directly toward him. We have got to turn around. But as he tries to escape, he breaks the rules one time too many, and his luck runs out. I get stuck. I'm stuck in the mud. Was headed directly at me. At that point, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get out of the vehicle. Lenny sits helplessly as the twister barrels straight toward him. He's out of options. All he can do is watch as it targets his truck. The tornado hit me directly. God, I'm in it now. Threw some debris into me. Cut me up a little bit. I'm in the tornado. I'm in the tornado. Everybody says your life flashes before your eyes. That's not what happens. I just wanted to be close to my family. I wanted my wife and I wanted my kids. I felt so alone. Ain't nothing I can do. I'm in the tornado, people. If you can hear me, I'm in the center of circulation. All the while thinking, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. OK. OK. And oh. then it, it, dis it dissipated. It just dissipated. I'm good. I'm, I'm alive. I'm cut up. I'm dinged up, but I'm, I'm alive. Randy and Mike continue chasing as night falls. Their reward? Front row seats at a once-in-a-lifetime storm chasing event. Large tornadoes right here. This is a very rare thing. I mean, that's like, you know, one of the holy grails of storm chasing to get two tornadoes on the ground at once. This one's growing, that one's shrinking. They're dancing, they're dancing! Mikey's like a kid in a candy store. He's out there doing airplane spins and pooping and hollering. And it's kind of like winning the Super Bowl, you know. Large tornado crossing right by the road. They're gonna merge. Conway the Springs was awesome. Hollywood can't ride tornadoes like that. And we were the only chasers there. A lot of my peers don't want to admit that, but you know, us backwoods, dyslexic, ninth grade dropout hillbillies kicked their ass that day, and they didn't like it too much. Unfortunately, in the scramble to set the probe, the cameras were knocked out of position. Randy's once-in-a-lifetime look inside of a tornado is out of focus. But I mean, we made history that day. He and Mikey were the first chasers to ever place a videographic probe in the eye of a tornado. We did that before anyone else ever done it. And that's something they can't take away from you. Coming up, Randy and Lanny come face to face with the horrible power of a deadly F4 tornado. No. Oh, dude, no.
Let me tell you what outlaw chasing is really like. Get up, bitch! <laughs> We can't afford some things like maybe some other chasers would be able to afford. Money's always been an issue with us outlaws. I mean, we've never had enough of it. It's all we can do to get out there four or five times a year some years, you know. If it comes down to chasing another two days or getting a motel room for 80 bucks, hey, buddy, I'm sleeping in a graveyard and I'm chasing the next two days. Yes. Bridges, graveyards, people's backyards, truck stops, libraries. Quite electric shade, but it'll do. That's the way we have to do it. May 4th was no exception. Randy woke me up underneath the tent in South Central Kansas, and we basically raced to Southeast Kansas, where the outbreak area was supposed to be. Reports come in that a tornado has already touched down miles ahead of them. Randy and Lanny quickly get on the road to catch up with the storm. They begin to feel its awesome power long before they can see it. That's gotta be 80 mile an hour wind or so. As they race toward the towns of Gerard and Franklin, they get a hint of the trouble that lies ahead. There's something right in the middle of the road here. The tornado is leaving behind calling cards. Uh-oh, yeah. That's a feeder. There's this, this cattle feeder. We're looking around, and I don't see no damn cows. Where did this thing come from? You know, it could have came from a farm a mile away. Yeah, I'm losing the feeder. Up. That probably weighs a couple thousand pounds easy. These are just the kind of things that fall out of the sky around the tornado. If you're within a mile of it, you could be killed by a refrigerator falling out of the sky and not even see it coming. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Picking up 1,000-pound pieces of farm machinery and tossing them around like they're toys, it gives you kind of a gut check about what kind of a tornado you're really dealing with. Suddenly, a terrifying sight looms on the horizon. Barreling down a dirt road, top to hill, and sure enough, there it was. It was that's why. Stop, stop, stop. And it was a big black tornado just chewing up the countryside. Nasty, nasty looking tornado. Which way is it moving? Which way is it moving? And it was the biggest, baddest, most violent, fastest moving tornado I'd ever seen. The outlaws have come face to face with a deadly F4. The F scale. Now the EF scale. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. An EF-0 tornado is almost a gale force wind. Minor, minor, minor damage. The higher you go up in the list, EF-4, EF-5, they are 206 to 260 miles an hour, take houses down, throw cars 200, 300 yards. Those are the tornadoes that kill people. I felt something I'd never felt before. I mean, the ground was trembling below my feet. I felt my rib cage vibrating in and out. It's kind of like a bass, the thumping bass, only it's a continuous rhythm that doesn't stop. And I'm a mile away from this thing. I'm thinking, my God, I can only imagine what it would be like to be up there with that thing, you know? Oh, thank you, Lord! Thank you! All I could think about was, I got to get closer, I got to get closer, I got to get closer. They blow past the stop traffic and barrel toward the colossal twister. Oh, my God, that sucker is huge. Look at the inflow, look at the inflow. And flowing it. It's moving so quick. Randy and I tried to stay on the south, southeast side of the tornado, but it took all of the ability we had as chasers just to stay with it. You gotta keep going east. The tornado was traveling across the ground between 45 and 70 miles an hour. I'd never seen a tornado move that fast. Big tornado, big tornado, big, 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 large tornado, very large tornado. The closer we did get to it, the devastation was, was getting worse and worse and worse. Oh, I hope those people are okay. God, please be okay. Look at the damage. What are you going to do? You can't, you can't stop it. I was giving the National Weather Service reports about the tornado's current position. Because this was, no doubt, a, a killer tornado. People standing out in the open. Was there people? Stop, stop, stop. Are you okay? Are you okay? Weaving through debris, the outlaws close on the storm. Soon they reach its outer edge and are engulfed by a rain of massive hailstones. But they're determined to press forward. We're literally almost inching. Two, three, four, five miles an hour, trying to get closer and closer. And as we get as close as we can possibly get, we get plummeted by some hail. Oh, the 
window bust. Holy sh That was the reality check of all reality checks. It forced us off the road for a couple of minutes just to kind of try to regain composure. Oh my God, what are we gonna do now? What hail, look at that hail, God. That's tennis ball size hail right there, folks. Tennis ball size hail. There was no way we could, we could stay with it that close, as powerful as that tornado turned out to be. Even the, with the ability that we had, we'd stayed with this thing for 40, 45 miles. We couldn't do it anymore. Game over. That decision may have saved their lives. As they exit the storm, Lanny and Randy witness firsthand the devastating force of the deadly twister. There's nothing left of the house, Randy. We can start looking for people, dude. We come up over the top of this little rise and realize that it's went through someone's neighborhood. That was something I'll never forget. It killed seven people within a 50-mile stretch. I'm seeing cars that are flipped upside down. I'm seeing trees that are bare. We're seeing houses totally leveled. Then I just had to pull over and cry because I couldn't take it no more. I saw things there I don't ever want to see. Oh. You do wrestle with two emotions after an event like that. The night before, both Randy and I were thinking, oh my God, I hope we get a big tornado tomorrow. And then it kills somebody. And you're guilt ridden. And then you feel like an idiot for being so damned excited about a tornado. We learned a lot about each other that day. It was a gut check day. It taught me to show more respect to the tornado itself. We've got to do something to bring it to the public like it's never been brought before. If, if our crazy way of chasing could help make one person pay a little bit more attention to weather and save their life, then I feel like everything we've done is worth it, you know? But Randy and Lanny are about to discover that sometimes there is nothing they can do to avert disaster. Oh, my God! After eight years together, the outlaw chasers thought they had seen it all. But 2007 quickly turns into the most treacherous storm season they've ever faced. 2007, for me, looked like it would be a pretty crappy year. You had weather patterns that just didn't look like they were going to shape up. And then all of a sudden, bam, it kind of changed around. Just a monster of a season. February, Colony, Kent. Man, I drove out this is insane. Oh, that's what happens when you can't see the road, man. March, Edson and Bird City. Large tornado, rope tornado on the ground right now. April, Protection, Kansas. I'm in trouble. Somebody just talked to me, man. I'm in, I'm in pretty bad. By May, the outlaws are already bruised, battered, and battle-worn. But Mother Nature keeps pouring it on. And she's about to hit them with a tornado unlike anything they've ever encountered. Lenny sees signs that something big is brewing near the town of Greensburg, Kansas. Everybody knew about Greensburg. It was a great place to kind of stop, sit down, have a cup of coffee, trade war stories. You know, it was just a really a cool small town. We've been to Greensburg several times. We love the people there, the community. On May the 4th, I met up with Randy and knowing that something was brewing in the horizon, we drove out to Greensburg. In a matter of hours, most of Greensburg, Kansas will be gone. It's already late in the day when the tornado responsible first touches down. Woo! Oh, that is oh, that's badass. It just kept growing and kept growing. Oh, my God, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Randy and Lisa break off to pursue the Twister. Lanny and Mike immediately call in to local news station KAKE's weather department. OK, tornado on the ground, Jay. Tornado on the ground, definite tornado on the ground. I'm going to put it close to Sitka's. This tornado is headed in, a, in an east-northeasterly direction. So uh, we were pretty worried that Greensburg might take a direct hit. But night has fallen. Other chasers following the rules would stop now. 
If they choose not to chase at night, hey, that's their prerogative. Who's going to give the warning if there ain't somebody out there looking for it? I hate chasing, but I have to pursue this thing into the dark to get the warning in. Lenny soon loses sight of the tornado in the darkness. You gotta be careful now, because it's right there. It's right there. I can't see anything. We were waiting for lightning or any kind of light that would illuminate that tornado so that we could tell what we needed to do next. Oh my god! It's due ahead of us! Monster tornado! Oh my god! Under cover of darkness, the tornado's grown into an EF5. The most rare, powerful, and destructive tornado known to man. And this one is almost two miles wide. It filled up my horizon. It was literally from one end of my windshield to the other. God, I hope it doesn't hit Greensburg, please. It was absolutely the worst tornado that I'd ever seen. I was giving media reports, I was doing phoners, I tried to do everything I possibly know how to do to get those people warning. They gotta know that a monster tornado is headed in their direction. Massive, massive damage. That's the only way I know how to, uh, to describe this, Jay. And the National Weather Service in Dodge City has taken the very rare step of issuing a tornado emergency, a very rare statement. Uh, the last Jay, time... I'm so yes, Jay, we, just had, we just had power flashes, more power flashes. This is bad. This is really bad, Jay. If you live in Greensburg, the vicinity of Greensburg to the south, I really suggest you go down to your storm shelters. I need to move. Get out, get out of there, Lanny. Lanny and Randy can do nothing but watch as the immense tornado slams directly into the small town. I see these massive, massive power flashes. Power flashes are when the tornadic vortex is going over your transformer, your power lines, the wires are being ripped from the transformer, you're seeing the sparks, and you can see the whole tornado just for brief moments. I mean, it lit that puppy up like it was daylight. <laughs> And I knew right then that it was going through Greensburg. You knew, oh, you knew in your heart that it was, it was, it was wiping everything out. Oh my God, Lisa, look at it, it's big, it's coming down. In an instant, an entire town is destroyed. It looked like a bomb had gone off. There wasn't any lights. There wasn't any noise, nothing. Almost a two mile wide tornado. The town wasn't two miles wide. It swallowed up this entire town. This is live streaming video via satellite. Cake Land Storm Chaser Lanny Dean putting eyeballs on this storm for us. Underneath that vehicle, right underneath the front wheel, just to the back, that's where they were hiding at. That's the closet that they were in. And when I saw the damage that I saw, I couldn't believe it. Oh my God, oh my God, it took that house. Oh my God. 10 people died. Cars were thrown half a mile, almost a mile away. There was no infrastructure left in the, in the town. There's nothing left. Anybody in there? Talk to me. And slowly but surely there, you had some ambulances. People are slowly starting to walk around. There was a helicopter that was flying around with a spotlight shining it down. That's when we made the conscious decision we needed to stay. We walked from one side of the town to the other, searching, digging through rubble, trying to find people. Morning will expose Lanny and Randy to the true scope of the horrors the tornado has caused. Sunrise may see the end of the outlaw chasers. May 4th, 2007, the first EF5 level tornado to hit America this century wipes the town of Greensburg, Kansas off the map. I've seen 246, 247 tornadoes. The Greensburg tornado was the biggest, baddest tornado I've ever seen in 17 years of chasing. Morning light gives Randy and Lanny their first look at the extent of the tragedy. It's horrible. These were, this was all houses. Everywhere you see was houses. 
as we were coming into town, I mean, everywhere you looked, there was, there was no town, there was nothing. There'd be like one building here, two thirds of a house there, but it was just piles and piles of debris and trees. I think this is part of an industrial building they used for the middle school. I don't know. Wherever you look, this was all houses. This was all people's lives. It's gone. If anybody was in this building, I can't imagine how they could have possibly lived. I really can't. Okay. Imagine that coming at you at 206 miles an hour. That's what it was like. This is the stuff right here that'll kill you. Witnessing the degree of devastation up close shakes Lenny to his core. I don't want to see any more of that. That storm f***ed me up. I had to go see a damn psychologist because of that storm. The outlaws run across many townspeople ready to rebuild. Steve Hewitt, Greensburg city administrator, reveals the extent of the disaster. When you have such a devastating storm, over 90% is destroyed, 95% heavily damaged, 100% was some kind of damage, and probably close to 1,100 structures of some kind um, are gone. We love storm chasing. You know, the tornado yeah. seems so beautiful and powerful, and then you see something like this, and it's like you almost feel guilty for chasing storms, you know? Yeah, but don't feel that way. I mean, what you guys do saves lives, saves many, many lives. People need to know the storms are coming. Because without, a, without your guys' hard work, putting your own life in, 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 in danger, I don't know what we've done. It felt pretty cool for him to, um, to talk to us like that. But um, we're not heroes, dude. We did what we had to do. We did what we had to do to, to try to help. I don't know what's going to happen. I guess we we'll try to keep doing our job as best we can until it's time not to do it anymore. There will always be a need for chasers. There's always going to be weather. That's not going to change. Tornadoes kill a lot of people. It doesn't have to be like that. You can't save everybody, but if you can save one, then all we've done is worth something, you know? To meet that challenge, Randy's also redesigning the Caminator. I got a feeling next year we're going to meet our goal. It's going to be our year. Feel the inside of a tornado. And eventually, someday, tornado chasing might be the death of me. I'm not 100% sure it ain't going to be, but it's not changing who I am, what I'm going to do, and what I've got to accomplish. Outlaw chasing, to me, is not about driving through a cornfield 100 mile an hour. It's a lifestyle. For that one brief moment, I'm the best son of a bitch on this planet doing what I do, and ain't nobody touching that. And that's a damn good feeling. Chasing tornadoes is a passion. It's what I do. It's who I am. Nobody rolls like we do. We're the outlaw chasers, and we're coming to a storm near you.